part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Look up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's... This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wayne, writer of Superman Birdwright, and you're listening to The Krypton Report. Welcome to the Krypton Report. It's October, and if you remember, October is the month that Jerry Siegel was born. So to honor Jerry and his writing and his creation of Superman, we're going to take a look at something a little bit different. And that is Jerry Siegel's creation and his formation of Superboy. So... And happy birthday to Jerry, his birthday the 17th, which is coming up really quick. So here we go. Origins of the character. From the the character's first published story in 1944 until 1992, the title Superboy was applied to versions of Young Adventures of Superman's Kal-El as a boy, teenagers of young Clark before he was an adult. The primary setting for the story was a fictional town of Smallville. The 30th century, which featured time travel in the Legion, and, of course, universities later attended by Clark Kent. Superboy was the first superhero to star in a successful solo title after World War II, during the Silver Age of comic books. Superboy was frequently the number two best-selling superhero, with monthly issues of Superboy and the Adventures comics regularly selling over a million copies combined. In 1938, Jerry Siegel proposed to Detective Comics that he do stories of Superman's childhood adventures, with the character calling himself Superboy. Detective, stupidly, I added that, rejected Siegel's pitch. In December of 1940, Siegel pitched the idea again with a complete script for the first story, but DC did not respond with the contractual six weeks. Within the contractual six weeks. In 1944, while Jerry Siegel was serving in the U.S. Army in Hawaii, Detective Comics published a Superboy story in Morphin Comics number 101. In an effort to expand the Superman franchise by presenting a version of the character to whom younger readers could easily relate. The story was particularly based on the script Siegel had submitted in 1940 and was illustrated by Superman co-creator Joe Shuster. DC had done this without informing Siegel. He learned about it in a letter from Schuster. And we'll get back to that in a little bit. The first appearance of Superboy, the art, was in More Fun by Joe Schuster. The the first Superboy stories were published as a bi-monthly feature in More Fun Comics issues 101 through 107. Cover dates January through February 1946. Except for the origin story by Siegel, the issues were written by Don Cameron, art provided by Joe Schuster. Further information on Adventure Comics. In the early 1946, Superboy moved to Adventure Comics, where he debuted in issue 103, 19 April, as a lead feature of the anthology comic, and he remained the headlining feature for over 200 issues. Notable stories appearing in Adventure Comics include the introduction of Crypto the Superdog, the story of how his friend, then teenage silence Lex Luthor, became his most bitter foe, and the debut of the 30th century hero team, the Legion, initially founded by a Superboy fan club. The popular Legion spinoff from Superboy into his own feature, which dominated in Adventure Comics number 300 in 1962. The feature soon dominated the comics with the last standalone Superboy story appearing in number 315 in December of 1963. Four years after his debut, here we are, 1949, Superboy became the only, only the sixth DC superhero to receive his own comic book when Superboy number one was published. The series became the first new DC superhero title to succeed since World War II. Superboy saw the debuts of the first Superboy story about Clark's adventures as a superpowered toddler and of Clark's two closest friends, Lana Lang, who served as a romantic interest for Superboy, and Pete Ross, who later discovers and helps protect Clark's secret identity. Other notable stories to appear in Superboy include the story of his first Bizarro, the first appearance of the Legion, Mon-El, and Ultra Boy. 
Beginning with issue number 197, magazine covers carry the subtitle Starring the Legion of Superheroes. Beginning with issue 222, the uh, the uh, title change to Superboy and the Legion of Superheroes, with the change becoming official title in the issue 231. Now, that's a little bit of just publication history of Superboy. Legal issues with Superboy. Given the character's popularity, only six months after Superman's debut in 1938, Jerry Siegel started to pitch a newspaper strip based on Superman as a boy to further capitalize on the franchise, which was rejected. Siegel again tried to pitch Superboy presenting a full comic book script of his first adventure in December of 40, but DC again declined. Despite these rejections, DC produced Superboy. The Superboy Ashcan in 1941. Producing an Ashcan was common publishing practice, whereas the publisher would take interior art and covers from existing comics and publish a few copies with a new title in order to secure the title for future publications. Ashcans are considered some of the rarest and most valuable comics on the collector's market. After being the primary credited Superman writer for four years, Jerry Siegel was drafted into the U.S. Army on June 28, 1943. Though he would continue to send in scripts and plots for Superman to DC while in the Army, DC supplemented Siegel's now less than frequent scripts with those written by Don Cameron, as well as Batman co-creator Bill Finger. Superboy first appeared in January of 45's More Fun Comics using the script that Siegel had pitched in 40 and fleshed out by Cameron. Though Siegel was allegedly not informed, the Superboy was drawn by Joe Schuster, who on October 1st, 1944, sent Siegel a letter as read in uh, from the this is the letter from uh, Kryptonite Truth Justice and the America's first superhero saying Jerry there's something quite important in the wind here and I want to write about it and give you a, f- a first hand picture I was assigned to do a five page release for the future Superboy to be used in more fun comics this feature I know is one of your original ideas which you tried to get out last summer since then nothing has said about it until this assignment was given to me I've just finished the job and I've been trying to get a copy to send to you. The Superboy story featured in more fun comics temporarily replaced the previous issue's twin detective comic, Henry uh, Henry Balafantuf's Dover and Clover, who would return again in the following issue, more fun comics number one and two. Um, when Superboy would later permanently replace the detectives, Jerry Siegel's character, who was among the first DC superheroes with the Spectre, Superboy stories from More Fun Comics 102 onward were written by Don Cameron, but credited to Siegel until his return from the war. After More Fun Comics 107, all the title superhero comics were transferred to Adventure Comics, starting with issue 103. In January of 46, Jerry Siegel returned from the war, ensuring it would be on the stands in time for his return. When Siegel returned from the war, he was reported infuriated that DC was using a character he pitched without his permission. Brad Ricka Superboy reported that his frustrations grew as he was prohibited from continuing his work from his Cleveland studio, with DC insisting he move to New York. After another year of writing Superman with his frustrations growing, Siegel convinced Schuster to join him in launching a lawsuit in April of 47, demanding $5 million in the rights to Superboy and Superman. Wow. <clears throat> Strangely, a month before Siegel launched the lawsuit, March 5th, 1947, saw the release of Superman 46, which contained the only Superboy story Siegel officially wrote for DC at this point, not counting the scripts that allegedly were used without his permission, with Superboy appearing in Superman's flashback as he visits his grown-up schoolmates. This may have proved the tipping point for Siegel. One of Siegel's former war colleagues, Fred G. Beers, recalled working with him on the military newspaper Stars and Stripes during their tour of duty in an article collected by the Cherokee Strip Museum. When I worked with Jerry on Stars and Stripes in 1945-45, he spent every off-duty hour writing letters to lawyers and others in a futile attempt to establish his share of ownership in the Superman bonanza. It was a sad spectacle for those of us who had come to know him as a colleague. His recollection matches the timeline of when Siegel received the Superboy news from Schuster and indicates Siegel had intentions to sue even before his return from the war. Siegel, however, didn't sue for more than a year after his return, continuing to work for the company, so it's very possible that being asked to include Superboy and Superman was the push he needed. 
Superboy's custody battle uh, in court. Even launching the lawsuit for Superman and Superboy's rights in April, it would be a while before Siegel and Schuster had their day in court. As summarized in Joan Siegel and Laura Siegel, Larson vs. Time Warner, Inc., the matter finally went to court on November 21st, 1947, and was resolved April 12th, 1948, with the judge ruling in Siegel's favor of ownership of Superboy, along with entitlement to any and all income Superboy had generated up until that point which was to be overseen by a third-party accountant. The judge also ruled in favor of Siegel and Schuster receiving compensation for Superman royalties they believed were being withheld from them, also overturned, overseen by the third-party accountant, and ordered DC to immediately cease publication of all Superboy stories. The judge also ruled that DC owned Superman himself, but the case was an overall win for Siegel and Schuster. Then, for an unknown reason... Siegel and Schuster settled with DC and and granted them the rights to Superboy for the relatively low amount of $100,000, which mostly served to cover their legal fees. Why they decided to settle for this low sum after they were legally entitled to more is up for debate, with some speculating that after the lengthy legal proceedings, they couldn't afford to wait for more money and decided to take less sooner. After the hard-fought battle Siegel and Schuster waged in court, the move is puzzling and must have happened quickly after the verdict because DC did not halt production of Superboy stories, which continued to be published in Adventure Comics uninterrupted during the course of the trial. After the settlement, May 21, 1948, the judge revised his April ruling. Unsurprisingly, the legal woes over Superman soared Siegel and Schuster's relationship uh, with DC, and their contracts ended and were not renewed before the lawsuit was settled. With Siegel's last Superman story appearing in the January-February 1948's World's Finest Comics, number 32. In 1959, he returned to DC as a writer and was dropped again in 67, when he again attempted to take back the copyright to Superman. With April 49's Superboy number 1, Superboy became one of the only new superhero titles to succeed. And what's so interesting about Siegel's career with writing Superboy is in the Superboy comics it expanded so much of Krypton with Kandor and the Silver Age. Like Superboy helped, you know, bring in the Silver Age of comics in a way. And it's sad because there's a lot of things that Jerry wrote that we're not sure if he did or did it. Like I've tried working on my research and doing things and digging into it, and there's some great podcasts for people to listen to about uh, Superboy and Super Baby and stories over on Superman Forever uh, podcast. But you know, Jerry, when he came back to DC, um, he wrote, but a lot of times it wasn't credited to his name, and stories appeared without his name. So it's not sure who wrote what, and it's a sad existence because finding sometimes Superman stories created by Jerry is hard to do. But we owe a lot, us fans do, to Mr. Schuster and Mr. Siegel. And it's just, you know, we take time in July and October just to kind of remember the origin, the the people that started it, and what that means to us. Remember. Look up in the sky. Yes, it's me, Sayla. We just want to say if you've enjoyed this podcast, please check out other podcasts on the Press Play Podcast Network. Remember to check out Krypton Report on all social media platforms. Go to linktree.com slash Krypton Report. you find all of our information right there. $1 a month, you'll get extra special content that you don't get on the main show like movie commentaries and whatever else comes out of our mouths so check it out patreon.com slash krypton report we're going to press pause and hear a few words from our other podcasts on press play podcast network hello brooks here with the books with brooks monthly book club podcast here's how books with brooks works We read one book a month, and then we talk about it. 
classics like Stephen King's The Shining, debut novels like We Are the Brennans by Tracy Lang, and tons of other compelling, life-changing stories, one book and one month at a time. So come read along with us and then listen in. If you are like Tyler and James and can't get enough super talk, check out these other podcasts. Digging for Kryptonite, Supergirl Radio, The Last Sons of Krypton, The Superboy Legacy Podcast, All-Star Superfans, Superman the Animated Podcast, The Aspiring Kryptonians, Always Hold On to Smallville, Caped Wonder, The Geek of Steel, and Truth, Justice, and Hope podcast. This is Dan Jurgens, and if you want to have a good time, keep listening to the Krypton Report.